Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another one here. This one actually I went on one of the past suggestions just to see if there was anything else I might have missed. And sure enough, it looks like there's this entry here that when I was reading the information on it, it's definitely something that I felt I should share here with everyone. So please uh, keep on with those new suggestions. I'll probably just do maybe about two more or so of these videos and then I'll see some of the older ones too. Again, this one though has to do with another unfortunate tragic tale, in this case involving the disappearance of a young boy, but the way he disappeared and then afterward, especially with regards to a clue as to who took him or who may have took him, that's what definitely has the most interesting part of this disappearance. So more on that here in a minute and you'll see exactly why. I wanted to share it here, but it's otherwise known as the disappearance of David Guerrero Guevara, also known as the boy artist. That was the moniker that the media essentially uh, placed for him once he disappeared. So, so who was this David Guerrero Guevara and the disappearance associated with him? Well, he was a 13-year-old boy who happened to live there in Spain, specifically at a town called Malaga, Spain. Uh, he lived there with his parents. He had two other brothers. And up, up until that age, about 13 years or so, he led a relatively normal life. Um, he was someone that was considered shy, very introverted. He never really liked to go outside. But one thing that he did excel at, it seems like, I guess, he, he pursued this more because of his shyness, happened to be his artwork. In fact, his artwork was considered very, very esteemed. Uh, you're looking at one of the examples here when it came to his artwork. It was known as the Christ of the Good Deaf. That's essentially how it translated to, but you can see how talented this, this David was. I mean, this is something that truly stands out when it comes to the level of, of, of realism, when it comes to the level of detail associated with this picture. You also see some other pictures that he drew along the way um, uh, in my video here too. But yes, indeed, he was someone that was very talented in that regard, and this talent eventually got interest uh, within a, 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 a a place, an exhibition known as the La Maison Art Gallery. There, some of his artwork would be featured, including the one I just showed, that Christ of the Good Death, that would be the main one when it came to, when it came to um, his artwork. So, in order to add publicity to this, uh, this, this event, he was supposed to go to a radio station to do an interview. This was something that basically traumatized him because here he was, uh, the barely, someone that barely was even able to talk to other people around him. Now he was supposed to go on a radio station and who knows how many people will be listening to him, but it was part of the deal. He was supposed to go there and provide publicity for it. Uh, part of what attracted um, uh, the museum, or in this case the art gallery, to his artwork happened to be his young age too because again he was just 13 years old and yet here he was exhibiting all this great talent. So, but in any case, he was eventually convinced or somewhere along those lines, just, just told to outright just do it. And so it came to that day, April 3rd, 1987, to be specific, when he was going to go to that radio station and then do the interview and then follow it afterward by visiting the art gallery. The idea was his father would take him from that location there in the art gallery, the, um, I'm sorry, to the radio station and then to the art gallery afterward, and then that way they would be together. In fact, that was another interesting thing that stood out. That's how nervous he was. Everywhere he went in his life up until that point, he always was accompanied by someone else, either his parents or in this case, one of his brothers. So the, the fact that this in this one circumstance that he finally ended up going by himself, that just makes it all the more tragic. But yes, on that day, April 3rd, 1987, it all started at 6 p.m. Uh, David came home from school. He decided, you know, decided to change clothing, get ready for his interview. His father, uh, whose name was Jose, was supposed to again drive him to the gallery, but there was something that prevented him at his job from doing so. I don't know what it was, but it was one of those things where you wonder afterward if but for the chance when it came to this slight little change. But yes, something happened there, and so his father either phoned home or did something to let them know he's not going to be able to make it. And so he had to have David go by himself 
to the bus station and then go to the bus station to the location there for the radio station. So again, keep in mind, this is David now wandering for the first time by himself uh, ever to someplace outside of his home, uh, whereas before he always had somebody there. But that was the whole idea. He would then be picked up a couple of hours later by his dad, and then that would be the end of it. So his, uh, David left uh, the home at that point, and then he went for the um, bus station, presumably to go there to see one of the buses to take him to that location. Well, it cut to a couple of hours later, around 9 p.m., which was the time period that his father was then agreed upon to pick up David from the art gallery. He went there, and lo and behold, uh, tragically, he did not find David at that location. In fact, upon further discovery, he found that David never even went to that radio station, to that location for the radio interview. So it was something, of course, that was just absolutely shocking, just traumatizing right at that point, because here he was thinking all along that everything was going fine. When it turns out for a good number of hours, David was gone. David was practically Dis it basically disappeared off the face of the earth. So somewhere along the way during the timeline then when David left at, at 6 p.m., around 10 to 15 minutes away, which was the location of the bus station, somewhere between there, that time period, that location, he disappeared. No one knows exactly what happened to him. Uh, interestingly enough, during that very same time, there was a queen that was visiting that location, Queen Sophia. So there was a lot more people within that town, somewhere around that area, at the very, very same time period. I don't know if this this hampered things. One would think so, because normally if, let's say, that she was wasn't there and there wasn't all the publicity, it probably the streets would have been a lot less full. And so his disappearance, David's disappearance would have been much more noticed. But the fact that this is bad timing and here you had her coming on board and then all these uh, tourists, all these other people visiting, it just added to the calamity of the location. So his disappearance would have definitely gone unnoticed at that point. The only other thing to mention too with his disappearance is David was complaining about some kind of pain that he was having uh, within himself, like he had some kind of stomach pains, if I'm not mistaken, and something involving a headache right before uh, he was supposed to go out to the bus station. That's the only thing to mention uh, with regards to interest right before he disappeared. Of course, the media eventually got attention uh, as to what was happening here. Here you have a talented young boy who suddenly disappears. And so the media decided to do a full hunt along with the police to find out what happened. In fact, that's where the moniker, the boy artist, came from. The one I was mentioning earlier is because of the fact that once they saw his talent, and they started showcasing all of his artwork within all the media pieces on his disappearance. It just added that nickname somewhere and somebody introduced it somewhere. And then it just stuck afterward. The police, of course, became involved and they went with the angle. Could he have run away? But David's family was very, very skeptical of this because, again, they mentioned the fact that he hardly ever traveled anywhere outside on his own. So he would have nobody uh, to be able to, I guess, have connections or somebody friendly or familiar to meet with outside. So the fact that he would then run away with somebody like that, no, it, they, they thought to themselves that just can't work. Instead, they went more along lines with the aspect that somebody must have taken him. Somebody must have abducted him, which would have made things easier there in that location because of the visit, it seems like, from uh, from that queen at that time. So, cut to a couple of years later, I think it was at least a year, two years or so, somewhere around there, and there was an interesting twist when it came to to his disappearance. Uh, up until that point, there was nothing. Like, there was the hunt for him and any clues whatsoever, but there was nothing. Not even his bag was found. Nothing involving his location. Absolutely nothing. It's almost as if, again, he disappeared right off the face of the earth. But cut to about a little time later, and there was a hotel maid who decided to go to the authorities and mention this. She found a clue with regards to one of the hotel rooms that she happened to clean there. Somewhere in that hotel room on a napkin, who knows like uh, where the napkin was found in the hotel room, but there it was. Somebody had written David's full name within the napkin. And when the police finally you know, looked at the room itself and they started doing some history on it, 
they found that there was a guest, somebody that was there, a Swiss citizen, 70 years old, unnamed. Uh, I don't know who that is uh, as far as any particular names, but he remains a name so far in the articles that I was looking at. But he was 70 years old and he rented it right during the exact time of David's disappearance. So strange that there would be something like that, right? In terms of a napkin containing David's full name around the same exact time of his disappearance. But where things took an interesting turn or another twist is this. Look at this picture here. Uh, this was a picture that was actually drawn by David and it was he was found, I guess, uh, somewhere along the lines of, of, of an area that David, I guess, disappeared at or frequented either way though it was been surmised that this location that this drawing itself uh, something like that was done by David and it showcases in this case his captor remember he was someone that could draw pretty well so the idea that he would in turn draw his own captor if he was truly indeed kidnapped or he was captured by somebody it does make sense. I can believe something along those lines. He's not going to be able to take a picture, let alone something like a video camera or a video or something like that. No, in this case, uh, he would be then be able to see uh, the person and then draw them afterward. So this drawing was found and it was believed to be resembling the Swiss citizen, the 70 year old one, because when they put it up against pictures of the citizen himself, they found an uncanny resemblance to him. So that definitely stands out. So here you have, in this case, the Swiss citizen now writing the name on a napkin, David's full name. And then now, in this case, the, um, the drawing being found, I think it was actually it was found in one of those places that the uh, Swiss citizen owned, if I'm not mistaken, because he happened to stay at several hotels, he owned several apartments as well, and I think that's where in one of those, uh, that, that's where they found it, because he was a photographer of some sort, that's where they had found a bunch of pictures that he took, nothing involving David, but... Uh, one of that's where they found the drawings uh, so that he collected, and one of them was apparently done by David himself. But yes, now there's this drawing done by David that matches him exactly. So if you're wondering, know what happened afterward with regards to that Swiss citizen? He died apparently in 1990. Again, years after the the disappearance of David. Here you have a situation where this prime suspect had already been dead. So with the idea that some Something like this like there would be a final resolution to the disappearance in terms of finding out from the suspect where's David what did you do with him something along those lines it was done uh, because if this was a prime suspect then they had nothing to go with considering the fact that he was already deceased but that's the closest clue in terms of somebody having knowledge to his disappearance and of course meaning an unfortunate dead end there nothing else has ever come about ever since that day there's always been these spotted sightings of David here and around other locations from Ireland to Morocco to other parts of the world in fact but to this day people just consider it um, like a misidentification at most or just ill-gotten rumors at others uh, in other ways but yes his case is still considered open there's in fact a DNA sample kept on board to make sure that if anything is ever found even in this case let's say an unidentified body then they're able to try to match it to him but even then to this very day there's no other information about his disappearance he disappeared in 1987 but nothing else has come about afterwards so but what do you guys think with regards to this disappearance uh the boy artist in other words another tragic circumstance uh very haunting especially by the fact that david might have actually drawn his own captor and left it as a clue of some kind but nothing else in terms of any other information but if anybody has something i might have missed maybe other info in that location, especially from Spain, uh, I imagine that every time there's an anniversary related to its disappearance, it just comes up with regards to new material, new clues, something like that. Please post those comments below. So, all right, everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.